Visiting us today is the noted movie and TV producer Jay Bernstein. Mr. Bernstein is currently represented on the air by the new Mike Hammer series. A new season is at hand, and we're pleased to offer our first bud of spring the person of the very talented singer, Julie Bud. And now, here's your man of the half hour, Skippy Lowe. Oklahoma City. God, Jay Bernstein, but a name like Bernstein in Oklahoma City, come on, tell me. The stagecoach broke down between Miami Beach and Beverly Hills. Uh-huh. Actually, that's a line made up by Nick Adams. Remember Nick from The of Rebel? Of course, I love Nick. Johnny Yuma was uh -huh. a rebel. Yeah, Nick, that was Nick's line. When people would say to me, he'd answer for me. Jay he'd Bernstein, say, producer, what? busy, even an actor. You do some acting, too, in some things. I did. I was in one of my own movies. I figured no one else is going to hire me. Right. So I've <laughs> hired me to write. Uh -huh. episodes in my series of Houston Nights or Mike Hammer or Bring Them Back Alive. I've also directed the last episode of Mike Hammer uh -huh. uh, that was on the series. I've uh, acted in, let's see, directed, written, acted. I'm in seven guilds. Warren Beatty and I are the only two people that are in seven guilds, but no one's ever hired me but me. Uh -huh. But I figured I should take advantage of the leverage. Right. In fact, the show that I directed on my camera was sent in for uh, an Emmy consideration. Right. But it was sent in by the executive producer, which was me. <laughs> <laughs> I so it. it's like, hey, things. at least I was considered for an Emmy. Tell me something. You went to Pomona College? Pomona College in Claremont, California. There's okay. a difference Claremont between. Space, yes. Yeah, Claremont, Claremont is great. It's got yes. scripts, it's got uh -huh. Claremont uh, uh, Men's School. They've got, uh -huh. they got like five colleges there. But the name Pomona is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure it's a very nice town for the right. people who live there, mm -hmm. but it's nothing like this little town. When I was there, it was 65% of the people were over 65 years old <laughs> and drove around in, in electric uh -huh. cars. Uh -huh. It was really, it's like a little New England town. Jay Bernstein, your father, he really didn't want you to come to Hollywood. He wanted you to go back east to college and, or to become what? He really didn't want you to be in well, the business, no, did that's, he? Well, no, that's not true. My it father... Isn't? My father was like Will Rogers. Uh -huh. My mother is like Nancy Reagan. It was a very interesting <laughs> combination. My mother wanted me to go to Harvard or Princeton or Yale or Dartmouth uh -huh. and to be a doctor or a lawyer. My dad just wanted me to be happy. I lost my dad 11 months ago. In oh. fact, I have his 32nd degree Mason ring is all oh. I have from the estate because it's all uh -huh. I wanted. But uh, he, was, he was just one of those people who... Uh, in fact, I dedicated the last movie to him uh -huh. because it would never have gotten done. We were so far apart on the license fee on, the, on, the, on a movie called The Diamond Trap. I did right. with Brooke Shields, Twiggy, Howard Hessman, Ed Marinero. We were $500,000 apart. My dad died, right. and my friends at CBS and at Columbia got together and just said they'll make the movie while I had to go away for the funeral. I see. So I dedicated the movie to my father. Well, that's very nice, really. Tell me something about Jay Bernstein and that southern accent of yours. I, I just love that. It's, it's a southern accent, isn't it? Well, it's it? Oklahoma. I mean, is Oklahoma's it Oklahoma? like Texas, and uh -huh. uh, it it's only term, comes it's out when I... a charming accent. Well, it depends who I run into. I mean, I can... Do you get thicker? Yeah, when, I, when, when I'm talking to people. Like, most people do not think I have an accent, but I must have been speaking to someone... To, oh, my best friend came out. That's what uh -huh. it was, for three days. I've known him since I was five, and so now I picked up... Hit my, I had one of those uh -huh. ears, like, because I'm an actor. Yes. Like, you're an actor. Right. And we're all actors. You we worked here in Hollywood this. as a car. Uh, you did cars. You worked in William Morris' office, PR. When I first came out from Oklahoma, I had $1,000 mm -hmm. that my dad gave me. Right. I lost 600 of it in Vegas on the way here. So I had $400. I ended up in an apartment on National Boulevard in the Hispanic district. Uh, I finally got a job. The day before, I had to be a teller at the Union Bank. I got a job because Hollywood didn't know I was coming for some reason. I right. didn't get any of my letters. So I got a job at William Morris in the mail room for $40 uh -huh. a week. But that was from 9.45 to 6.45 at night. And then I worked in beautiful downtown Burbank on an assembly line making ball bearings from 8 at night to 2 in the morning. Uh -huh. And I parked cars at Lowry's on, uh, on La, La Cienega on the weekends. So, because I wanted to be in show business. But you got into a big office called William Morris and then Rogers and Collin? Mm -hmm. But what happened to Rogers and Collin, Jay? You, I mean, you just, you decided, hey, I'm, I've had enough of this. I want to open my own office. Is that I what happened? I left Rogers and Collin because of Jane Mansfield. 
Jane Mansfield, who I liked very much, didn't understand that I was going with a girl by the name of Leslie Parrish, right. who, who you've seen in The Manchurian right. Candidate. She's now married to Richard Bach, who did Jonathan Livingston Seagull. And I was living with Leslie. Uh -huh. But Jane Mansfield thought I should be living with her, and we were having a little bit of a sexual problem with all of this. And so I asked Warren Cowan uh -huh. if he would take me off the Jane Mansfield account, because I loved work that I was handling. Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., uh -huh. Peter Lawford. I had the Rat Pack. I had Eddie Fisher. I had all those people. But they wouldn't let me off the Jane Mansfield account because she was going to fire them. I did, so I went and I started an office in my girlfriend's spare bedroom. Right. And then when we broke up, I got a single apartment. Uh -huh. I kept the files in the stove and in the refrigerator, kept out the plugs I love so it. that it wouldn't burn up or freeze the, uh, the files. And I had a guy working for me who could write, and he typed on an ironing board on a typewriter uh -huh. on an ironing board because yes. I couldn't afford a table. Uh -huh. And uh, so, and by the way, speaking of writing, I'm getting ready to do a book next. It's called Fired by 600 Stars and Still Smiling. <laughs> Fired by 600 Stars. I'm doing it with Mickey Herskowitz, who uh -huh. wrote the Dan Rather book, right. the Betty Davis book, uh -huh. the Gene Tierney book, mm -hmm. the Gene Autry book, the uh, Michael Deaver book, the Leon uh, Jaworski, the Watergate Prosecutor's yeah. book. And he's doing uh, a book now. He's finishing with... Uh, uh, John Connolly uh -huh, uh -huh. from Texas. But Jay Bernstein, you're responsible for a lot of these people, like Farrell Fawcett, mm -hmm. Summers. I mean, there I can go down the line. You made a lot of stars. You groomed a lot of stars. Grooming, I think, is your idea. Because you don't look for talent. You look for class, and then the talent comes later. Is that correct? What do you think about that, Jay? I look for a quality. Quality, I mean, yes. What I can do is, if I can fall in love with somebody in 30 minutes, right? I can just tell by talking to them then if it's that kind of love, I believe I can make America That's right. fall in love with that same person. That's how I felt about Farrah Fawcett, Suzanne Somers, uh -huh. Christy McNichol, Linda Evans, Donna Mills. You know where you get that Bruce quality Bruce Boxleitner. Hmm? Oh, he's great. Yeah. Clark Gable. That's another Clark he, Gable. He was with me last night, and he's playing a Gable part. He is playing the romantic lead uh -huh. who was just signed this morning in the new Judith Krantz uh, miniseries, uh -huh. Five Hours, called Till We Meet Again. Uh -huh. And he plays this very gable, uh -huh. swashbuckling kind of lover part that's, I mean, he's, he's just been, yeah. it's eight years for us. And I'm, in fact, I'm the godfather to both of his children. I think and Stacy Keats just made me the godfather to his son. So it's like, you know, there is a payoff in all this somewhere. So there is no Jay Bernstein. You don't have regrets then about uh, what happened with all those people that fire you and all those No, because I understand it. I understand that when you get them where you want them to be, where they want to be, where uh -huh. the air is rarefied, right. and you and they become deified, then I get nullified. It's rarefied, deified, and nullified. How did you meet Farrah Fawcett? Uh, I was... I introduced Sonny Bono to somebody who became the next share for uh -huh. People Magazine to put on the cover. Right. He got some heat. He did a six uh -huh. million dollar man. Uh -huh. We went to the football game with Lee Majors. Sonny talked me, talked Lee into being with me as a, when I was a press agent. Uh -huh. And Lee said, okay, but you got to handle my wife for nothing. And I said, who's your wife? He said, Farrah Fawcett Majors. She was doing commercials. Uh -huh. You're not married? No. Single? Single. The women I loved enough, uh -huh. I never thought I could get along with well enough uh -huh. to marry him. And the women I got along with well enough, I never loved enough. But you live alone in a big house, Carol Lombard's old house. Yes, Isn't that she strange? built it right after she, uh, in 1936, when she was divorced from William Powell. Uh -huh. And just before she met Clark Gable, they lived for a while in this uh -huh. house, but he had a place out in the valley. Right. And then they moved out there. What kind so, of feeling does this house have at night, Jay? I mean, lo when you're alone in this house, you must have that. There's got to be kind of a ghost spirit there, isn't there? What do you think? Well, I had a, uh, a, a chef there for a long uh -huh. time who said that, that there was a, a ghost there. I never saw a ghost. I don't really believe uh -huh. in ghosts. I see. Because, see, it, it's interesting. The, the chef reminded me of a thing. I've been in this town, like Mike Todd and a lot of different right. people have been. I've been rich and broke three different times. Three? But I've never been poor. Now, here's the difference. When I was broke, uh -huh. I didn't have enough money to go to the supermarket. But I would then have casseroles made out of canned goods that the chef would uh -huh. make. But at uh -huh. least I had a chef. That's the difference between uh -huh. being broke and poor. So, you, so you've really tasted Hollywood. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I Stacey Keach went to jail and I had to go out on the road for 17 months, I put two mortgages on Carol Lombard's house to give me enough money to go out and tell the people that you only pay once for a debt, once for a mortgage, and once for a mistake, and the man mm -hmm. is paying. Which is my camera, because I'd like to have done that one right Go ahead. That's okay. Which I can't see a red light.
You know, Which that's is my right, that one right there. Well, that's my camera. Yeah, right. Okay, how's it? And then, so we got four hundred thousand letters uh -huh. of people writing into CBS, and we they let us come back as a movie. Right. And there were people who wanted to help us worked for free on the movie, uh -huh. not the one we just finished. Right. But the return of my camera. Mickey Rooney worked for free. Bruce Boxleitner worked uh -huh. for free. Dabney Coleman. Dion Warwick to help us get back. Uh -huh. We did 22 episodes. Then they canceled us with a new regime. Uh -huh. Now our first movie we just finished last uh -huh. night called Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer, Murder ah. Takes All. Uh, and it's with uh, Linda Carter as guest starring with Stacey uh -huh. and Michelle Phillips. Lyle Alzado, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Where does Jay Bernstein want to go from here? Uh, to lunch at the Ivy. No, come on, Jay. Oh, what um, do you really? I mean, you you know Hollywood very. I don't know. Very, I mean, where, I really do, don't, don't you? Know. I mean, you know, I'm in the middle right now again. You're getting. You know, you were away for a while. I mean, the you know, but now you're back in the news again. I mean, just now uh, you just had a something happen at uh, the Heartbreak. Well, I, I, I was, I was a hero. I was, this what was happened? Very there? heroic. I was sitting there with, with Bruce Boxleitner and some people, and this guy was being a little rough with a lady. Uh -huh. So I asked him to stop, and he told me that he didn't want to, and mm -hmm. a few expletives. So I picked up my tossed salad, hit him in the face with my tossed right. salad, and got him on the side with this hand. didn't knock uh -huh. him out because I'm uh -huh. not that big. But what happened is now they've called me, and they're naming it the Jay Bernstein Toss Salad <laughs> at the restaurant, it. and they're going to have it by next uh -huh. Monday <laughs> on the menus, and they, they were offering it last night as their specialty. The Jay Bernstein Toss Jay Bernstein, salad. do you have a lot? I love heroes. That, you know? that, yeah. you Alan a, Ladd was my favorite. He what? was. Was he your favorite? Oh, yeah. That's how I grew up. That's how I but got into But he was small. He was I small. came out here to meet Alan Ladd. I mean, <laughs> I was uncoordinated. I was in Oklahoma City, and uh -huh. I couldn't. I was the fattest kid in my class. Uh -huh. And I just, I used to tell my parents I was going to sports practice, and I'd go get on the bus, go downtown, and watch Alan Ladd hit Howard De Silva uh -huh. to save Veronica Lake, or I'd watch Robert Taylor, uh -huh. or I'd watch Clark Gable, or I would watch. John Garfield or whoever it would be, but I lived through all of these stars. Oh, I see. I see. And luckily, I've been able to come out here, and I met Alan Ladd. Uh -huh. uh, William Holden was one of my heroes. Uh -huh. He took me after the Wild Bunch to uh, to Kenya, and I shot the last elephant for conservation hunting. I love it. <laughs> uh, the last elephant shot legally in Kenya uh -huh. in 1973, uh -huh. and uh, and I was uh, I managed Susan Hayward. I managed oh. Glenn Ford. Tell and me about Susan, Susan Hayward. Tell yes. me. I just love this lady. She was my favorite, favorite lady. She was Mine a lady. Too. She was the most powerful lady on film. She was a woman. Yeah. Tell me about her in person. I mean, how did she... Well, it was interesting because a lot of people thought Susan was uh, either stuck up or that there was a problem because she was really a loner. What happened was she was myopic, and the glasses she had to wear were this thick, like Arnold Stang. Yeah. And she didn't want to go out because she says, one time, Jay, I'm sitting there, and John Wayne walks up to me. We've just done the, the movie together. Uh -huh. and, and I didn't know who it was uh -huh. because she couldn't see. see. So she didn't want to go out and embarrass herself, so she stayed home. And that's when the town started saying, well, she thinks she's too yeah. good for us because they didn't have contact lenses yes. then, yes. And particularly for people with, you know, who really uh -huh. couldn't see. And she was extremely myopic, and that's what happened. But during her last years... She just said, like in one of her movies, yes. I want to live. Uh -huh. So I taught her how to shoot rifles. We uh, went to Africa, and she went on a leopard safari. Oh. But the point was she couldn't see the leopard because uh -huh. it was a twilight. So, uh -huh. so she stayed there till she caught pneumonia. Then we came back. Uh -huh. And once I remember calling her, and it took her about 20 times to answer the phone when she was in Fort Lauderdale. I said, what's wrong? She, I said, you took you 20 times. She said, well, I couldn't get to the phone. I said, why? She said, well, I broke my ankle. I said, how would you break your ankle, Susan? She's in her 50s now. Uh -huh. She says, my motorcycle fell on it. Right. I said, you're what? <laughs> so my motorcycle fell on it. Uh -huh. I said, what are you doing on a motorcycle? She said, well, I met this pilot, and we went scuba diving. Uh -huh. I mean, she was, I mean, this lady loved life, and she was one of the nicest people in the whole world. I'm looking world. at you. You love life. It seems that Jay Bernstein really loves Hollywood. Why do you love Hollywood so much, Jay Bernstein? Well, I've always needed role models in my life and I had them when I was a kid we had the presidents we had uh -huh. the military we uh -huh. had whether it was MacArthur or whatever but ever since Watergate we haven't had any political heroes ever since Vietnam uh -huh. we haven't had any military heroes right. Eisenhower's and right. Patton's and people so what happens is that only leaves sports and 
we don't have a lot of sports heroes because they do commercials for electric eye garages, right, right. electric lawnmowers, and pantyhose. Mm -hmm. And so it left it down to music. And I don't like uh -huh. what music says. I like the Julie Budd kind of music, but I'm talking about the guys with yes. the green hair and the uh -huh. spike bracelets and telling you all sorts of bad right. things. Right. You know, Ozzy Osbourne and all this stuff. So it was the actors. So uh -huh. I helped to create uh -huh. the image of the 70s, which was Farrah Fawcett, Farrah which Fawcett. was anti-alcohol, mm -hmm. anti-drugs, pro-exercise. Mm -hmm. I brought back the heroes That's right. because when I came along, we had what was called the President Carter <laughs> Soft Detectives, right, right, right. Barnaby Jones, yeah. Cannon. Yeah. I brought in with the Ronald Reagan era, right. Mike Hammer, which bequeathed which mm -hmm. the Equalizer, Spencer for Hire, mm -hmm. the Hunter. All of those came yes. with me and and the actors that you know became the younger heroes, like the Alan Lads, etc. Right. You mentioned Julie Budd, wonderful singer, America's Fantastic singer. one of great pure singers. She's a pure singer, no gimmicks. She has no gimmicks at all. She's one of Julie, my favorites. Julie Thank Budd, you. how are you? I'm fine. I'm, I'm loving this. I'm are you really? To this whole you thing. know, this man is Mr. <laughs> Hollywood, really. He, he really, is, isn't he? But you can how only do this in America. I mean, I'm listening to oh. this, and here's this, this nice Jewish boy from Oklahoma City. Bernstein, you know? yeah. <laughs> Bernstein. <laughs> And you know, he was sort of, well, I get the feeling he was sort of introverted as a child. <clears throat> I wasn't yeah. introverted, I was just fat and not coordinated. Oh. And a thinker. And a, a thinker, thinker yes, you know? yes, yes. And he had a dream, and look what he's done with his Isn't life. Isn't that great? But you, you had a dream. Anywhere else. But you had a dream, Judy. You <sighs> were just a little girl, not even a teenager. That's right. And you went upstate New York and sang. Yeah. Well, and I, what happened? I was very, I knew what I wanted to do when I was this big. What happened you to know? you? You know, a lot of kids You did don't. talent shows up there, and then Merv Griffith came into your life. That's right. Tell me about the murder. Well, okay. there's a Bernstein in my life by the name of Herb Bernstein, whose brother's Jay Bernstein also. You Jay Bernsteins keep following me around. Okay. I was in the Catskill Mountains. I was doing a, um, I was like 11 years old. I was doing a talent show. Uh -huh. My cousin said, I bet you you won't go into this show. And uh -huh. I said, sure I will. You know. Uh -huh. <laughs> bet you won't jump off the building. Of course I will. <laughs> <laughs> so I won the contest. Herb Bernstein was there. Uh -huh. What was the song? I want to know the song. Do you um, remember the song? I did two tunes. I did Moon River, uh -huh. and I did Who Could I Turn To. Uh -huh. I was very dramatic. <laughs> anyway, so... <At> 11. <laughs> I, yeah, I won the contest, and Herbie cut a demonstration record on me. My parents did not want me in show business. They didn't? Oh, please. I mean, only bums are in show business, uh -huh. and a girl uh -huh. to have a daughter in show business? Uh -huh. From New York? From New York. Uh -huh. Right. Orthodox Jewish family, uh -huh. you know, to have a daughter in show business, they'd rather die. Right. You know, so and they, they supported it because they knew I really, really wanted to do it. But they were really, really watching with a keen eye. They right. were very, very worried about uh -huh. me. Herbie was recording Merv Griffin because he's basically an arranger and a conductor and a producer of recorded projects. Right. And Merv was at the session. He was recording Merv, and on the break, Merv heard me sing, and two days later, he put me on the show. And see, I was only 12 years old when I met Merv, and I couldn't work clubs. I was underage. Underage, right. And there Under were a lot of concert halls I couldn't right. work because they, exactly. uh, they had a lot of um, booze that they were selling uh -huh. these places, uh -huh. and in certain states you can't do that. In Nevada, you could do anything. When I was 13 years old, 14 years old, I could work Nevada. I could work Tahoe. I could work Reno. Uh -huh. I could work Vegas. Um, but you work in Atlantic City, and they just gave you Entertainer Award of well, the Year. Well, they, they, they um, honored you? Uh, they have a whole thing where they have, uh, you know, uh, people who are uh, singers and actors and uh, uh -huh. um, special acts, and, and they, they name certain people and they, they acknowledge certain performers uh -huh. that they like, you know. Uh -huh. I'm excited because we just did the back lot. And, uh, Here in Hollywood. Uh -huh. And I didn't know what was going to happen because I haven't been in L.A. in three uh -huh. years, you know. And they turned away about 2,000 people. You live in New York. <laughs> 2,000 people. Something Incredible. like that. People are still calling saying, is she there? Is she there? Uh -huh. And, you know, I only took one weekend because I didn't know what was going to happen. I figured, well, I'll just go in and see, you know. Uh -huh. But I was overwhelmed. And they were lined up at Robertson Boulevard, and I was pulling up in the car, and I said, Herbie, what are all these people doing here? <laughs> 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 they were carrying chairs, and the fire department called and said, if they bring in one more chair, we close down the place. <laughs> so I'm going back for two How weeks. How wonderful. Jay, do you ever handle singers? Do you ever, when you, when you oh, go sure. out in cabarets and see some talent like Julie, a young girl, do you, do you see that certain extra, it's got to be that certain extra spark, too, isn't it? But I've never really been in the music business except when I had a PR firm. But right. I handled 
Sammy Davis Jr. for 13 exactly. years. Exactly, I understand Warwick, that. Yeah, right. So uh, you know Chicago, what it is. So, yeah, blood, yeah, sweat, you've handled tears, the tops, uh, the tops of all. Yeah, yes, I understand. Dean Martin. I had, I had, you know, like 50. Rick Nelson, uh -huh. all those people. But as a manager, I never handled any. I had Batula Clark, Aretha Franklin, Dusty Springfield, and, and Diana Ross when they were the four top at one time. Right, you know, right, Jay, right. When you're, when you're in PR, I've mm -hmm. always thought that PR people were like extended managers. They are. You know, they, yeah, I, they it's are. a natural they really progression are. to yes. go from public relations right. to management uh -huh. because, right. you know, sometimes you're even more creative than the manager. And you get to know things about the artist that maybe the manager doesn't see. He's too close. Mm -hmm. You have to be creative. You have to come mm -hmm. in and uh -huh. find things about them that other people mm -hmm. don't see so that you mm -hmm. can yes. go out and be creative. I really think that people from PR make great managers. i got to tell you, like, my uh, press agent, Anita Alberts, is sitting over there. When uh -huh. I went on the road for Stacy for 17 months, she set up a schedule, and I was right there with Jacqueline Smith yeah. selling whatever uh -huh. she was selling and Sidney Sheldon uh -huh. with his thing. and. Uh, it, she was able to do that, which I don't think any manager or anybody That's else right. could have done that for That's me. That's right. And they always go into management. Yeah. Even Larry yeah. King gave me three hours. Did he really? Yeah. I love he's Larry terrific. King. I think he's, he's terrific. the greatest. He's great. Greatest on TV. You brought a tape. I like to see that tape. From, what is it from? Uh, I was co-hosting a telethon here uh -huh. in town. I love uh, that song. May You've I? Got Tonight uh, by Bob Seger. I'd love to hear it. Okay. Love to play, sure. play it and roll it. I know it's late I know you're weary I know your plans Don't increase Still here we are Both of us lonely Longing for shelter For all that we see Legends. She has worked with legends. God, that's Your clients. Your oh, clients. <laughs> Tell me something about Frank Sinatra, uh, Jimmy Durante. <sighs> well, Jimmy Durante was adorable. I had a great time with Jimmy Durante. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. He He's did his, very his last performance in Vegas with uh -huh. me. And he was true. And audiences loved him. And I learned something about people like Liberace and Jimmy Durante. They loved their audience. They, they love their audience. They love their audience. Does Julie love her audience? Yeah, she does. Because Do they're real loyal to me. 
You know, they don't come to my show because I'm hot at the moment or I'm cold at uh -huh. the moment. Or they come there because they they want to be involved with what I'm doing, and they've been doing that, and I appreciate that. You spend a lot of time in New York, Julie. Yeah, I, I bounce. I have an apartment in New York and have an apartment here in L.A. Does people say, Julie Budd, she sounds so much like Streisand. No. They don't? People said that when I was a child. When you were a child? When I was a child. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. really strange. When I was a child, they said that. Jay, look at her eyes. Aren't they gorgeous? She has the most <laughs> gorgeous eyes. I already I, asked her you if have? I could come see her show. She, and have a drink with her afterwards and look in her eyes. She, she, <laughs> I her told eyes him we didn't have to change the initials on the towels. <laughs> <laughs> Spillane, come on. Tell me, how did, how did that show become about? This I was on an Mickey airplane Spillane. flying from L.A. to New York, and I made some of my biggest deals flying first class. Uh -huh. if you, you know, that's, Is that how you yeah. do it, Jen? That's, yeah. that's it? I was, I was sitting it? there, and I look over, and there's Mickey Spillane, my childhood hero. Uh -huh. And he's reading a newspaper, and he's got that pork pie hat. And I look over, <laughs> and I said... She walked towards me, her hips waving a happy hello. Uh, and he put down the paper, and he looked, and he laughed, and thing. And then he picked up the paper again, because I guess you know, he's, uh -huh. he's been through this before. Uh -huh. So I said, women stuck to my camera like lint on a blue serge suit. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we started talking, and uh -huh. he said that uh, I really don't deal in Hollywood. I haven't in 15 years, because I don't really like the people there. Mm -hmm. And he told me what he didn't like about him. But by the time we landed, I guess he didn't think I was one of those, so we made a deal for one dollar in the beginning uh -huh. to uh, gave me the, gave me the rights to be partners on uh, my camera. And Mickey has just written first time in 15 years. He's got a new my camera book coming out. Really? Yeah, a new uh -huh. Mickey Splain my camera book. You know, uh -huh. the first one was I the Jury, uh -huh. you know, back in the 40s, and it's just uh -huh. come out, and it's going to be out in about uh, five months. But do you have a woman in your life now, Jay? Come on, come on, get. Secret person, uh, you know, that you don't let people know about. Certain girl. Did I hide in the closet? Yeah, me? because you're 50 years old. You know, you're a good-looking guy. You know, 50 years old. I'm 40. Years 40 old. years old. 40 years old. Forgive me. 41. 40. Okay, 41. 42, Whatever. I'm 43. sorry. <laughs> I'm 50. You're, mm. But anyway, you you know, let's face it. You're uh, a good-looking guy. You know, eligible. Bernstein. You know. Well, so why Tell do you me. just have to have one? Well, you have many. I know no, you have I, many. Everybody knows you have many, but you must have. I don't ask certain... you about your sex life. No, <laughs> I, you must have some special lady hidden away that that you planning to get married soon. No. No, I'm not planning not? to get married soon. You're not. No. How about you? Do you have a man in your life? I was married and divorced. So Were you married? I, yeah. You? Did you know that I was no, married I did for not. seven years? Yeah. Really? Uh huh. In fact, when I met you, I was married. Oh, I see. Yeah. When I interviewed the last time. Do you mm. have any children? I raised his son. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I I don't uh, I don't see myself getting married, not unless I wanted to have children. Mm -hmm. If I met someone that I was wild, I would have to be so wild about that person to uh -huh. want to get married, because I don't see myself being married right now. But you know, it, will you marry me? <laughs> uh, Jay, I'll have Chinese food with you, and then we'll talk, okay? Chinese food. Well, you see that? I love it. Nice Jewish, I proposed it. Lovely Jewish girl with the Chinese food. <laughs> Julie, you seem very happy. I am happy. Are you? I feel like I'm in a very, very good place. You're in satisfied life. right now. And I'm enjoying Los Angeles in a way that I never have before. It's interesting. I really made that sort of transition. What makes it, Julie? I mean, because I of... must just be ready to be here now. Uh -huh. I think sometimes, you know, it just gets down to that kind of thing. I'm just ready to be yes, here, yes. you know. Jay, you spent a lot of time in Hollywood. I've, New York? No, here. You never lived in New York, Jay? You don't York, like Jay? New York, or do you no, go I, back I, I and like, forth? No, I like to stay here. You like Hollywood? Yeah. Did like you ever live in New York? No. No? No. He's not a New York man. No, he's Jay not. Bernstein no. is strictly California. No. He loves California. He's considered Mr. California, Hollywood. Really. Why do they consider you Mr. Hollywood? You have discovered a lot of stars like Farrah Fawcett and, and Summers and... Tell me about Summers, first of all. What kind of girl is she? Suzanne is lovely. She has, in fact, when my house burned down, the part of the Carol right. Lombard house, uh -huh. she offered me her home, which, had, which was the Gypsy Rose Lee home. Uh -huh. She has five.